Is this what you want? You want to talk about sacks of wool? Well, that's what we're doing today. Also, don't worry, I'm going to make a joke about that log in about two minutes. Also, I didn't like that I did that. Very nice stuff to be kicking around. The tale of the iron, 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 the I'm in Christianstown, Christian's own from Theo and Harris. I'm in the town he grew up in. I'm assuming this is the pride of the entire town. Besides his G-Wagon. Whoops, never mind. We are on Cape Cod. Land of where I grew up. This feels like home. Train tracks apparently you're not allowed to go on anymore, but whatever, I'm grandfathered in. Anyways, today is the Filson versus Weatherwool video. I am carrying both on my person right now. The packer had to go back to Filson, sadly, but I have B-roll of it. And today we're gonna be talking about Filson versus Weatherwool a little bit, but really we're gonna talk about is each one worth it because there's something about Filson that I feel like everybody should know that doesn't seem to be going around on the internet too much, but also so we're gonna talk about why both brands use virgin wool, the wool that Weather Wool uses versus Filson, bunch of stuff, it's very exciting. Also, I have to make this video very quick because I'm going to be flying to California to see my sister. Okay, so the thing that both of these garments share is that they both use virgin wool. Virgin wool might not mean what you think it means, depending on what you think it means, but really it's just wool that's never been used before because what you can do with wool and cotton and a lot of other things is you take old garments or old pieces of fabric and you rip them all up and then you basically remake them thread and remake them fabric and then you have a recycled garment. That's great in certain purposes, but when you need a really long-lasting, heavy-duty piece of outerwear, it's not that good. And what's really interesting that we'll get into later is that Filson uses a thicker wool. What I actually mean is thicker wool fiber. We'll get into the thickness scandal later. Filson uses a thicker wool than weather wool, which usually you think is stronger, but weather wool tests for things that other companies don't to make sure they are not only comparable, but they exceed strength. That's right. I'm the first one to say it. Weather will exceed strength. Also, you'll notice I'll be complimenting Weatherwool a lot. I work with Ralph from Weatherwool, but that really, honestly, the reason I work with Ralph from Weatherwool is because the wool is insane. Like, this wool is bananas, so I'm complimenting it a lot. It's deserving of its compliments, but I'm also not dissing Filson in this regard because Filson has a lot of stuff that people are gonna like, too. So anyways, both brands use sheep that have never had sex before. Also, sizing for these two brands is pretty similar. I wear an extra small in Weatherwool and Filson. I could probably wear an extra extra small in weather wool, but I could not emasculate myself that much when I was at Ralph's house picking out something to buy. So I went with an extra small. But if it's great, you can layer under both of them. The Filson work jacket that I'm wearing right now is actually an extra small, and I have a champion hoodie under it, and I could still probably put something else under it. So you'll definitely have enough room. The tough part is, I think most people should size down, but if you are a big human being in any way, shape, or form, like you consider yourself to be larger, Maybe go true to size. Okay, now, here's what you need to know. Each one of them uses different wool for different reasons. Here's what you need to know before we do micro reviews of each product. The reason I'm able to review like $3,000 worth of wool jackets is because of our sponsor, Carrot. Have you ever opened up a million tabs of things that you wanna buy for you or a loved one or a hated one or something like that? And then you don't close your browser because you don't wanna close the tabs because you wanna save all those things? Carrot is the solution to that. You can make collections on Carrot of things that you wanna get. All you have to do is add an item to cart and Carrot will automatically put that in a collection that you can categorize. But today we'll specifically be looking at the search function on Carrot because the Iron Snail has officially dominated the search function. There's a new product search function on Carrot which takes the most popular things added to collections and when you search something like men's wool jacket you see all the wool jackets that people have added to their collections so that way you can pick the best one that you want you can see a bunch of different styles very quickly anyways search some things on carrot definitely click my link and look at things so that way carrot keeps sponsoring videos thanks carrot this is where weather wool gets crazy because to fully understand the wool that they use we have to go back to 1600s or 1700s spain and talk about the merino sheep because this is not just merino wool it's rambouillet wool in the 16 and 1700s, Spain basically had a lock on merino sheep. So then what happened was King Louis of France, King Louis, you're familiar, he had his head chopped off, he convinced the King of Spain somehow that France needed merino sheep. For some reason, the King of Spain agreed and he gave some merino sheep. I don't know why Spain let them do that. Some history buff is probably like, because of gunpowder, Michael. France got all these merino sheep and they made sure merino sheep only mated with merino sheep. No virgin wool here. But then what happened was France started to pay attention to England's long-haired sheep and they thought, what if we combine the softest, most beautiful wool in the world with the longest wool in the world and you get Rambouillet sheep. Rambouillet sheep stole the show at the Paris Exposition of 1870. Mr. Mall, the chairman of the jury for wool at the Paris Exposition, wrote in a U.S. agricultural report that we may safely say the Rambouillet is at present the most perfect type of fine wool sheep in existence. And then Ralph at Weatherwool said, 
Okay, but there has to be better wool than just any Rambouillet sheep. Wool is tested across 20 parameters, one of which weather wools pay special attention to because thinner fibers are generally thought of as not as strong as thicker fibers when we're talking about wool. But weather wool obviously can't have that happen. So one of these 20 parameters is strength testing. And that's very important when we talk about Filson, which we'll talk about right now. Wool is tested across parameters in general. To be used in clothes, it has to be a certain quality, so on and so forth. But oftentimes you can kind of cheat the system with durability testing by selecting good quality fibers if they are from a thick wool they're like okay well it's from a thick wool so it's gonna be strong anyways but what you can also do is you can separately test for strength and make sure that your fibers are extra strong what weather wool does is they test all of their fibers for strength to make sure they get very fine fibers that are also strong enough to be very durable so they can compete with very thick coarse wools like Filson. Now the interesting part about that is that the reason you want thinner fibers is because thinner fibers are way comfier and silky smooth against the skin versus thicker fibers that are a bit rougher. When we're looking at microns, which is how the thickness of wool is measured, 30 microns is when wool starts to feel scratchy and uncomfortable and people start to notice. That is a scientific number, I'm not just making it up. And from what I found, Filson's wool is generally 25 to 33 microns, but Weather wools is on average 21 microns, which is always feels comfortable against the skin. This, the jacket from Weather Wool does feel closer to a pillow you could lay on it. That doesn't matter to a lot of people, which is what we need to end on at the end of this video. That is not a bad thing, it is just a different thing, but you have to see what you like. Okay, so now Filson's wool history is a little different. It doesn't have this whole story behind it, but it's still very cool. It's from the Suffolk sheep, and they're just known to be incredibly tough and hardy and muscular sheep. It sounds like exactly what Filson wool would be made out of. These are the most popular sheep in the United States, but they're also just, apparently they grow extremely fast. They're super jacked, and they just walk around with their thick wool. But Suffolk sheep wool is considered a down type of wool, which again, I will read because I have to go on a flight to California. Down type wools have a shorter stable length, medium diameter, and usually a matte appearance. They are characterized by a well-developed spiral crimp giving exceptional resilience and elasticity. Okay, I believe it's officially time to switch over to weather wool from Filson. Take one last look at the work jacket. I do love the work jacket. I like the crop. I like the look of it. The one thing I will say about the anorak is that if you are not mobile for whatever reasons, if you're not very limber, I would suggest looking at the all-around jacket or a jacket with a zipper. Okay, so Weather Wool and Filson use two different weaves of wool. Filson uses a twill, which you're probably familiar with from things like denim jeans, for example. Weather Wool, of course, I... Weather Wool uses... No, they don't use a plain weave. They use a jacquard loom to make this, which is interesting because jacquard loom, you probably associate with like very patterned rugs, Pendleton blankets sometimes. It's a specific type of loom that is used to make patterns in a very fascinating way But basically there's a plain weave which is you have fabric going like this You have the weft and then you have fabric going over under over under over under over under but a jacquard loom puts a pattern into the fabric, so it's not over, under, over, under, over, under. It depends on the fabric, but it could be over, over, under, under, over, 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 under, under. But basically, I believe the story goes when the Lynx pattern was being made, which is the flagship, which is fun fact after I say this part. Basically, Ralph just realized it was better in every way compared to all of the other wools he tested. I did tons and tons of research as to why it's better. My best theory is that since it is not a continuous pattern, maybe the ups and downs of certain threads going over other threads too or three times at a time, it being an inconsistent weave or something like that, helps displace the wind, helps displace the water. I'm not positive, but super fascinating. The fun fact is that every piece from Weather Wool is the Lynx pattern, just with different color fabrics. It's just using the same color thread so you don't see the pattern. On older versions of Weather Wool garments, if you hit the light correctly and put your arm at an angle, you could see like this pattern. Anyways, I really have to go, but let me break everything down for you very quick. I just saw someone, I'm in my hometown, I just saw someone from high school. It's very weird to be in your hometown because you feel like you've grown a lot. I live in New York now. I have a very, very long-term girlfriend that I'm probably gonna marry. And you're like, oh my God, yes, things are so crazy. Everything changed, everything's different, I'm doing this now. And they're like, oh, so you're still doing YouTube? And then what happens is I realize that they know me as the guy that would walk around the town with a tripod and camera and talk. And that's who I've been for my entire life which is very weird. Anyways, today we're talking about Filson. Okay, so quick overview, then I'll go into if any of these products are actually worth it, because they're all actually very expensive. But if we look at the work jacket, it has four pockets technically, well, six pockets technically. You have two hand warmer pockets on the side, you have the big flap lower booby pockets, and then you have the tiny little pocket on one of the booby pockets, and then on the inside, you have an internal pocket, which is great. It is a lighter weight jacket, late fall, unless you layer, today it's like 28 degrees. I had a hoodie under it, and I felt fine. Then we have the anorak from Weather Wool, and what's cool is if you tell Ralph, 
have an idea you have and he thinks it's good it just goes on the piece it just he just adds it on so you look at the interact for example and something that you can't see but if i put my hands in the kangaroo pouch right here there is webbing to hold things like little loops of webbing there's also these stealth pockets on the side that you can put things in. I put my phone in there when I'm walking. The neck buttons up all the way. There's zippers on the sides. Then, fascinatingly, you have about 80 trillion melamine slot buttons all over this piece. They virtually do not come off the garment once they are sewn on. They're so tough on there. They have had reports of someone falling or something tearing. And instead of the button coming off, it rips through the buttonhole of the garment. And then, of course, you have the Packer coat, which is just, just a beast of a coat. It has this huge sheepskin collar, four booby pockets, a case on top that's that little flap double layered arm so it's incredibly warm incredibly well built it has the back map pocket so it's three layers back there well two because they cut the cape off where the map pocket is but that is a beast of a coat with an eight ounce lining there's a pocket on the inside unbelievable coat and you have to have some confidence to wear that but anyways there's one more thing that's a scandal about wool weights that we'll talk about but I want to talk about if all of these are worth it and I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't want to hear but I think it needs to be said the question of if they are worth it or not is a very very hard question to answer without people getting very angry. I feel like weather wool is pretty obvious. You're like, yeah, this is expensive stuff, but it's made on a jacquard loom. It's from Rambouillet sheep. It's stitched in New York. It's a small business. It's all this. Not to kiss Ralph's butt and Weatherwolf's butt and Debbie's butt and everything. I'm not going to kiss any of their butts. I think I've said it enough where the expression kind of lost its... It just sounds like I actually mean that. Now, the scandalous part, obviously, is Filson, and people think Filson's very overpriced. I one time saw a comment that said, there's no more than $40 worth of wool on a Filson jacket. Like, I don't understand the price. A lot of people think it should be $300 or $200. There's just a bunch of other places that have cheaper jackets, so why would you want Filson? And I will say, I'm making my own wool jacket in the U.S. with wool from the U.S., and it's not cheap. It's hard. I know Filson has scale, and the cost of garments and cut and sew is not the only thing. It's also how they run their business. It it doesn't seem $450 is expensive. It doesn't seem crazy expensive. It does seem like Weatherwool's giving you a lot more value, but I don't think you're getting as gouged as you may think you are. Here's the quick thing at the end, the summation of Weatherwool versus Filson and the scandal. First off, the scandal is 26 ounce wool. Filson says 26 ounce wool. If you ask Ralph about how heavy his wool is, he'll say 19. But in reality, this feels dramatically heavier than Filson wool. Why is that? Well, because the interesting part is you're saying how heavy something is, but you're not giving the per. So you're saying 26 ounces, but you're not saying per what? So if someone says how fast I'm driving and I say 12, 12 what? That's what's missing. And when fabric is made, it's not all made to the exact same size. So Ralph at Weatherwool is saying 19 ounces per square yard is the weight of his wool. But if he advertised it as a lot of these other brands do, most brands that use ounce on their website, he could say it's heavier than 26 or 24 ounces. And he says on his website, our wool would probably be considered heavier than, you know, our competitors. Anyways, I have to go, but here are my thoughts. The appeal of Weatherwool to me is equal to the appeal of Filson, but in two very different ways. Filson has the perfect heritage wool. Filson has the perfect heritage jackets and coats. Filson wool is some of the most beautiful wool. And then you have Weather Wool. It uses the best buttons in the world. Everything is made in the US. They use the best wool in the world. They knit on a jacquard loom. There's all this stuff that makes it so unreal, but that doesn't mean Filson still isn't a good jacket. It just means Weather Wool. Weather Wool is its own thing. Anyways, that's about it. I'm hoping I put up another video before Christmas, but if not, happy holidays. I'm sorry that the videos have been coming out every two weeks and haven't been as big. I've been working harder than I've ever worked in my life. So I'll see you very soon. I hope everything's going well. I hope you're going to see people that you love for the holidays. And if you're debating on either of these jackets, I hope you get one that you really like. So anyways, that's about it.